In the last video, we talked a little bit about how to sign up for a class account, how to add students to the class, and then how to add an assignment for those students to finish. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to sign in as a student just so that we can see what it looks like and how to make a story bird. So I'm going to sign in under one of my student accounts. So this is what the students would use to log in. Again, if you're if you'd like, you can have them do it at school. If not, um, you can have them do it another time. Here you're going to see on the student dashboard, it's going to look a little bit different than yours. It shows unpublished work, anything that they need to finish, published work. Um, and then if we go up to the top here, if we go over to classes, it's going to show any assignments that need to be done. So for this one, uh, this was the assignment that I created in the first tutorial. So I'm going to click on this one. And then here, it's as simple as just clicking on Start a Storybird for this assignment. And then once you do that, it's going to show you um, a whole bunch of pictures, some random ones. You can click on See More Art. You can actually choose by theme. So here you have uh, a tag cloud. Uh, so you can go through and choose by themes. Um, let's see. Why don't we go by... It needs to be something creative. So why don't we go? Uh, let's see what would be a good one. I think broomstick might give us something a little bit creative here. All right. So then we can choose from any of these. It will show any of the ones that are based upon a broomstick. Uh, I'm going to click on this one just so I can get a better idea. I'll show you a few examples of some work over here. Uh, if you click on see all art, it will show you all of this pictures that go along with that and you can go through each page. I think that this should work for a creative story though so I'm going to start my story bird. On here we're just going to click this is for an assignment for creative storytelling and then jump in and then this brings us to the actual interface of story bird. Now in order to do this all you have to do is just click on a picture and drag it over. And you'll see here, wherever the gray is showing, that's what the picture is going to take up. So if I wanted to, it could take up the entire picture or the entire space. I could have it take up just the right-hand side. I could have it take up the left-hand side. I could have it take up the top. I could have it take up the bottom. However they wanted to do it, which makes it versatile, and it really helps to make this feel like just the student's own. So I'll start off like this on the first page. And as you notice, I kept the spell check on. So if I misspell a word, you'll see the red underline. Um, We'll just add that in there. Um, in order to add a page, we'll go down here, we'll click on add a page, and then we can add another page. Alright, so as you can see, it's very easy to use. Um, it's very simple. It's basically just pictures and writing. That's it. There's not a whole lot else that's involved with it. They can continue to add more pages until they feel that they're finished. Um, of course, when they actually do the book, uh, it will flip. So this will be uh, the second, this will be on the right hand side of the book. The other one will be on the left hand side. We'll go back, we'll change our cover quickly. We'll just call this the journey. You can actually change what color you want this to be. And then once the student feels like they're finished, uh, of course they'll want to save it periodically. Once they're finished, they'll come over here to Menu and click Publish This Story Bird. And then here they can add in a summary, they can add in tags, they can add in what this is for, the assignment, what age level this would be for. Uh, so let's just say this would be 7 to 9. Publish. and then the book is done, it can be watched, and the teacher can view it at any point. 